we want to solve the equation two sine theta equals square root three and the equation two sine theta equals negative square root two on the interval from zero to two pi without using a calculator, which means we'll be solving these two equations using the unit circle and reference triangles. So for the first step, we want to isolate sine theta. So if we have two sine theta equals square root three, we would divide both sides by two. So we'd have sine theta equals square root three divided by two. So for the next step, let's determine in which quadrants the sine function is positive. Remember, sine theta equals y divided by r on the coordinate plane, and if we have a right triangle, sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. So because sine theta is equal to y divided by r, sine theta is positive wherever the y coordinate is positive. So sine theta is positive in the first quadrant, where both coordinates are positive, and sine theta is also positive in the second quadrant, where x is negative, but y is positive. Let's first solve this equation using the unit circle, and then we'll also solve it using reference triangles. So a unit circle, y is equal to sine theta, which means we're looking for a y coordinate of square root three divided by two in the first and second quadrants. Notice how here we have a y coordinate of square root three divided by two at pi over three radians, as well as here at two pi over three radians, which means these two angles have a sine function value of square root three divided by two. So our two solutions are pi divided by three and two pi divided by three radians. So let's write the solutions down and then we'll also find them using reference triangles. So we had pi divided by three and also two pi divided by three. Now whenever we have a trig function value that involves square root three, two, one, or square root two, this should remind us of our reference triangles, more specifically the 30, 60, 90 reference triangle and the 45, 45, 90 reference triangle pictured here. Because we're trying to solve the equation sine theta equals square root three divided by two, where sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, notice that sine pi over three radians is equal to, again, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, or square root three divided by two. Which means if we sketch a reference angle of 60 degrees, or pi over three radians in the first and second quadrants, we can find our two solutions to the given equation. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll sketch a 60 degree reference angle in the first quadrant here, which again is equal to pi divided by three radians, as well as in the second quadrant here. Let's also sketch the reference triangles. And label the three sides. We'd have the short leg one, hypotenuse two, longer leg square root three. But in the second quadrant, where x is negative, this would be negative one. So the solution in the first quadrant, we can see would be 60 degrees, or pi over three radians which we have here, and our second solution in the second quadrant would be this angle here. In degrees, we'd have 90 plus 30, or 120 degrees, or in radians, we'd have pi radians minus the reference angle of pi over three radians, giving us two pi over three radians. So whichever method we use, of course, we get the same solutions to our equation over the given interval. Now let's look at the second example. Again, the first step is going to be to isolate sine theta. So if we have two sine theta equals negative square root two, we divide both sides by two. So we have sine theta equals negative square root two divided by two. 
And again, sine theta is negative, where y is negative. So the two angles we're looking for over the given interval must terminate in the third quadrant, where x and y are both negative, and in the fourth quadrant, where x is positive and y is negative. Let's first solve this using the unit circle. So now we're looking for a y coordinate of negative square root two divided by two, which we know would be in the third and fourth quadrants. So here we have a y coordinate of negative square root two divided by two, as well as here, which means sine of five pi over four radians and sine of seven pi over four radians equals negative square root two divided by two, which are our two solutions over the given interval. So we have theta equals five pi over four radians and theta equals seven pi over four radians. Now let's also solve this using our reference triangles. To do this, we'll ignore the sine for a moment and determine what angle has a sine function value of square root two divided by two. So going back to our reference triangles, let's find an angle that has a sine function value of positive square root two divided by two. We'll notice how the sine of pi over four radians, or 45 degrees, is equal to the ratio of the opposite side of the hypotenuse, which is one divided by square root two. But if we rationalize the denominator here, we do get square root two divided by two, which means because we're looking for a sine function value of negative square root two divided by two, if we sketch a 45 degree reference angle in the third and fourth quadrants, we can find the angle that has a sine function value of negative square root two divided by two. So we'll sketch a reference angle of 45 degrees in the third quadrant and also in the fourth quadrant. Let's also sketch our reference triangles. So we'd label the legs one and the hypotenuse square root two, but in the third quadrant, both coordinates are negative, and the fourth quadrant, y is negative. So our first solution would be this angle here, which in degrees would be 180 degrees plus 45 degrees, or 225 degrees, or in radians, we'd have pi radians plus pi over four radians, which equals five pi over four radians, and our second solution would be this angle here, which in degrees would be 270 plus 45 or 315 degrees, or in radians we'd have two pi radians minus pi over four radians, leaving us seven pi over four radians. So I think it's important that we can solve these types of equations with a unit circle as well as with reference triangles. I hope you found this helpful.